Made weak by time and fate, the rails here sink ever deeper into the grass, ever more enmeshed by undergrowth, ever more blasted by unforgiving Fenland winds. Yet this is a railway not in decay, but in limbo, a line identified as a priority for reopening, matched with considerable local and political support, whose economic benefits have been costed and approved. So what is the delay? Why has this trackbed not yet seen trains return? Much is to be rediscovered of this railway, from bridges, to buildings, to signal boxes, and beyond. So, let us find out what it takes to reopen a railway, and, in so doing, explore the lost branch lines to Wisbeach. Located in the northeast of Cambridgeshire, the Fenland market town of Wisbeach prospered as an inland port but flourished by the coming of the railways. Famous for its fields of fruit, it was the railways that ensured this produce could be delivered as fresh as possible nationwide. Now, cut off from the rail network, it was once the case that the Great Eastern Railway operated trains from March to the south through to Watlington in the east via Wisbeach. The Watlington branch closed in 1968 and was ripped up shortly thereafter. However, whilst it closed to passengers in the same year, the line from March to Wisbeach remained open to goods traffic, with the last of such services traversing its rails at the start of the 21st century. With so much of the line's infrastructure still intact, and with the social and economic benefits of a rail connection being well known, a campaign to reopen the March to Wisbeach line continues to be mounted. And it is against this backdrop that we explore what remains of the railway, beginning in March. March is a fine railway station, and from its footbridge we face east, and the rare sight of a traditional operational signal box as a service bound for Liverpool Lime Street makes its way to the platform. Platforms 1 and 2 continue to see traffic, but sadly the five other platforms which serve this station are now out of use. Including the filled-in bay platform, here to the left of the picture, which served Wisbeach bound services. Having departed, trains would take a sharp curve north, which is exactly what this rail tour along the branch did. The railway would then skirt the vast Whitemore marshalling yards, once the largest of its kind in Europe. Reopened in recent years, albeit on a smaller scale, it is now Network Rail's Rail Recycling Centre, where materials from the industry are reconditioned and used once more across the country. What a boon to have this on the doorstep of a railway in want of reopening. Thus, the route to Wisbeach, now locked off from the rest of the network, sneaks away through the bracken. Emerging under half a mile later, where it traverses the closed and silenced level crossing on Elm Road. North of the crossing, the track and signage appear in good order. Though, as we continue, the undergrowth has established a firm foothold. A quarter of a mile later, we reach Chain Bridge, which straddles 20-foot river. Here on the 21st of November 1998, the Pathfinder Tour's Crompton Pedigree Rail Tour forges north as we take in the same view today. Hereabouts the time-worn paraphernalia of another redundant level crossing. And so out into the countryside. It is hard to imagine that trains like this mighty Class 47 once traversed these rails. But should such trains suddenly return, the signs here remain to remind you of your crossing etiquette. From above, road and rail run parallel, with a condition of the line laid bare. I hope you're enjoying this film so far. Please like, subscribe, share and comment. Do you think the line to Wisbeach should have closed? Will it ever reopen? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.
Thus, a little under three and a half miles since departing March, we reach the only intermediate station here at Colden. This photograph from the 1950s shows the two-road goods depot and signal box with an overhanging section to enable the signalman a clear view of the lines through this village station. And from the same position today, the station closed in 1966 and only the stop sign here hints at the railway's whereabouts. Another picture here profiles the station. Notice the innocuous monolithic structure to the extreme left. This was the gentleman's toilet block. Today it is the station's sole survivor. Coldham's two platforms were staggered north and south of the level crossing, the gates of which are still in place. Today, their duty seems to be holding back rampant undergrowth. Before arrival at Wisbeach, we must traverse the wide, flat, open Fenland landscape. Here we find the remains of a brick fireplace, once attached to a long-gone permanent way hut. On cold, bleak Fenland days, one can imagine the plate layers beating a retreat to this welcoming shelter. And hereabouts, the features of a railway in stasis. So we continue. After half a mile, this bridge comes into view. And if we stand on it, the surprising sight of rolling stock is to be seen in the middle distance. For this is Waldersea Depot, which once served local agriculture in the area, with their daily fruit and flower exports, mostly to London and the south. Today, it belongs to the Bramley Line Heritage Railway Trust, a group dedicated to reopening the line between Wisbeach and March, but whose initial aim is to restore the section of line between here and Coldham to the south as a heritage railway. Sighted here was once a 20 lever frame signal box. Gone by the time this next picture was taken when the Brown Cow Rail Tour passed in January 1995. Once again, a site of mighty gates can be found guarding the crossing. As we continue north, the route is enmeshed by undergrowth. And whilst one and a half miles later the bracken has been cleared, so too has the track. We see Wisbeach getting ever nearer and beneath us Redmore Lane level crossing, whose alarms are silent and whose lights have long gone out. And as if reaffirmation of the overgrown track bed were needed, we find ample evidence below. We will have to settle for screenshots of where the railway once crossed the A47. Even this explorer of lost railways was unwilling to risk life and limb on this busy, fast stretch of road. A road which is one of the substantial obstacles a reopened line to Wisbeach would have to overcome. Into the town itself and we find this railway culvert on Newbridge Lane. And this notice about the only clue that a railway ever crossed at this point. The crossing on Wiesnam Lane is still to be found and is the last substantial reminder of the railway to and from March. And we see the Crompton Pedigree Rail Tour again, idling here back in 1998. North of the crossing and the rails that once led to Wisbeach East and the former goods yard have largely been removed, though hidden beneath the verdant Budlier growth, some track can still be found. Until the year 2000, goods trains continued to visit the pet food factory sited here, departing Wisbeach early on most weekday mornings so as to avoid holding up traffic on the ungated A47 bypass. The factory itself sits on the site of the former goods yard, located at the centre of this picture. The line from March enters from the south. To the north, we see the pink line representing the Midland and Great Northern Joint Railway, which also served the town. But we also see the line from March turning east, 
leading us appropriately enough to Wisbeach East Station, marking the halfway point of our journey. The station opened here in 1848, and over the years was redeveloped, acquiring the Wisbeach East name 100 years later in 1948. Whilst the station permitted trains to travel onwards towards Watlington, a route we will explore shortly, this was also the northern terminus of the famous Wisbeach and Upwell Tramway, a line which served the extensive fruit growing trade for which the area was famous. It seems hard to believe that now, with no trains at all, this station once saw six services a day on weekdays to London Liverpool Street, with seven trains on a Wednesday and Saturday, and three on a Sunday. Today, there is nothing. Closed in 1968, the station site has been utterly redeveloped and, aside from a street name, no trace of the railway nor its infrastructure is to be found. But these fine post-closure photos remind us of what once was. The presence of the onward railway east towards Watlington is, initially, not quite as obvious as the line from March to Wisbeach, and, unlike the latter, there is no realistic proposal nor prospect of this reopening. Here the railway forged east. The green space between the roads marks the route the Wisbeach and Upwell tramway took south. Trains would emerge here on Meadowgate Lane, where once Walsoken Railway Station was opened between 1848 and 1851. Here stands the crossing keeper's house, now in private ownership. And another such example on Broadend Road, as our railway takes us out deeper into the Fen country. A good mile out of the village from which it takes its name is Emnath Railway Station. Even remote stations such as this seem to have been kept in fine order. Today, we are fortunate that the main station building survives as a private residence, with some appropriate recent additions in the form of this Mark I railway carriage. And the survival of railway buildings such as this. We move further into Norfolk now, where soon enough we reach Smeath Road railway station. Serving the village of Marsh and St James, the station opened in 1848. Hereabouts was a signal box, goods shed and good siding as seen in this detailed evocative photograph, whereby we face east towards Watlington. And here the view west, back towards Wisbeach. The goods shed has been converted in the years since closure. The signal box survived until 2005, when it was dismantled. But, as we see, the unusual looking station building endures as a private residence. At the time of filming, the building was in a poor condition, but on the inside we see the colours of the Great Eastern Railway faded and flaking. From time-worn interiors to windswept exteriors now, and a mile hence we look back towards Smeath Road from the top of this railway bridge, which we see here in profile. And after half a mile we reach the next station. Middle Drove can surely lay claim to being the most remote station on the line, not appearing to serve any village in particular, only a scattering of houses in the vicinity. It is a miracle the station survived all the way up to closure in 1968. Like Smeath Road and Emnath before it, the station building lives on as a private dwelling, and like those properties there are several clear reminders that a railway once passed through here. Adjacent the station was once a signal box and goods shed. Both long gone, but seen here in better days. Here, a mile hence, is as close as we can get to middle level Drain Bridge. Whereas one and a half miles later, no trace of Magdalen Gate railway station could be found here on Fen Road. Like Walsoken Station, it was an early closure on the line serving the village of Wigan Hall St Mary Magdalene for only 18 years. Here we see one of two sequential river crossings. This is the bridge that carried the railway over the River Great Ouse, of which only the abutments survive on each side of the bank. But coming into view, it's Companion, crossing the River Great Ooze Relief Channel. Mm -hmm. 
Built to replace an existing bridge, and done so only a few years before closure, it is a fine, grand relic on our easterly journey, and the last substantial structure before we rejoin operational rails. And so it is after a mile, the line would turn north and join the Fen Line to Kings Lynn here at Watlington Railway Station. Opened as Watlington in 1846, renamed Magdalen Road in 1875, closed in 1968, reopened in 1975 and renamed Watlington once more in 1989, this fine station, some 90 miles from London Liverpool Street, has much to offer the enthusiast not least of all the extant station buildings. And, of course, the signal box, which continues to be manned and still bears the station's former name in Network Southeast branding. Whilst there is no prospect of the line between Watlington and Wisbeach reopening, the same cannot be said of the line between Wisbeach and March. As alluded to, reopening the branch line to Wisbeach benefits from significant local, political and economic support. So what's the delay? Why has little happened? Whilst vegetation has occupied parts of the line, the track bed remains remarkably clear. It is likely the line would need to be relayed after so many years of disuse. But since it sits on the doorstep of Network Rail's Whitemore Rail Recycling Centre, this should not be too problematic. Some challenges remain, such as where the line crosses the A47 and the appropriate sighting of a new station at Wisbeach. Again, challenging but not insurmountable. It should come as no surprise, then, that the achingly slow pace of railway reopening occurs because of a drawn-out bureaucratic process. At a local level, studies and reports have to be commissioned, funded, produced, agreed, published, presented and ultimately accepted, a process which can take at least a couple of years to complete. Add to this the fact that different agencies and different stakeholders want different reports with different demands and different specifications that, unsurprisingly, seldom align. More time, more money. Combine this with shifting political sands, in the case of the Wisbeach branch, the previously discounted idea about transforming the line into a very light rail system was put back on the table by the new mayor of the combined local authority. And it is easy to see how the process of reopening railways is fraught, to say the least. Network Rail's eight-stage grip process, by which major railway projects have hitherto been governed, is also cited as a reason for interminable delay. Their own website states that it is inflexible and that the rigid stages set out by grip can often lead to time-consuming and unnecessary delays. The process has been replaced by their PACE programme, which aims to reframe the approach to railway construction and ultimately make the process efficient and deliverable. It was this process that governed the recent reopening of the railway to Oakhampton but the reopening of railways can still be measured in many years. Where the pace will benefit the reopening of the Wisbeach line is, at this time, uncertain. What is certain is that it is often the drive and willpower of small local groups whose relentless determination to navigate the giddying political, economic and bureaucratic pitfalls of this dispiriting process that are at the heart of successful projects to bring back lost railways. And whilst the rails of the line to Wisbeach continue to rust, we can only wish such groups the best of luck. I hope you enjoyed this film. Please do comment, like, share and subscribe to Rediscovering Lost Railways.